Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be talking about equivalent representations of rational numbers. So what that means is we have rational numbers and oftentimes they're written in fraction or decimal form. So we're going to have to know how to convert between a, a decimal and a fraction and back again. And then also we can write what's called an equivalent fraction where we have multiple fractions that represent the same number. And so how to calculate those. So as I'm going through how to do that, make sure that you're taking notes so that you have a reference to go back to on how to do those three things when you're trying these problems on your own. And if I ever go too fast, just pause and rewind and get caught back up. There's no harm in that. That's the beauty of learning from a video. And you can even pause at the beginning of a question. You work the problem out, make sure to show all of your work, and then come back and watch the video and compare my work to your work to see how you did and see if there's some areas where you need to work on still. So I'm so glad that you're joining us today and let's go ahead and take some notes. In the first couple of questions, we're gonna be asked to find an equivalent fraction. So first, it's important to know what an equivalent fraction is. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have that definition copied down in your notes. An equivalent fraction represents the same value with different numerators and denominators. So here are some examples. These four fractions, they all have different numerators and denominators, but they're equivalent fractions because they represent the same amount of each circle. So here you have one out of two pieces of the circle for one half of the circle. Here you have two out of four pieces of the circle for two fourths of the circle. But if you look, the same amount of the circle is colored in. So those are equivalent fractions. They're two fractions that represent the same amount. <clears throat> to find an equivalent fraction, typically you're going to multiply, but sometimes you'll divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. And it can't be zero. So here, if you take one third and multiply the numerator, the top, and the denominator, the bottom, by 2, 1 times 2 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, that gets you a new equivalent fraction. And if you do that again with the new one, you get 4 twelfths, and that gets you a third equivalent fraction. So if you were to draw a circle with 3 parts, 6 parts, and 12 parts, and then color 1 of the 3, 2 of the 6, and 4 of the 12, you would be representing the same amount of circle, of the circle. And then every now and then you can also divide. Um, this is part of reducing a fraction, is if you divide the top and the bottom by the same number, and that gives you a new fraction with whole numbers, these are also equivalent fractions. So if you had a circle with eight parts and you colored four of them, you'd be showing the same amount as if you had a circle with four parts and coloring two of them. As our example up here shows. The other piece of notes you're going to need to know is how to convert a fraction to a decimal, and then our next slide will be going the other way, a decimal to a fraction. So if you're starting with a fraction and you want to convert it to a decimal, you're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. So that means the numerator is going to go underneath your division symbol and the denominator is going to go outside. And this is where you, you will have to add a decimal in and zeros in order to finish dividing. You can also use the, the calculator to check your work. So you can, if you were to check this in the calculator, you would just type 1 divided by 4 equals, and that should also get you 0.25. Now to convert a decimal back to a fraction, you're going to start with your decimal and you're going to look at the place value of the last digit to the right of the decimal point in the denominator. So here, that place value of, we're looking at the place value of 5, which is the hundredths. And so then you remove the decimal point that made the, and put this number in the numerator. So the hundred, because the 5 is in the hundredths, is going to be the denominator. And then the rest of the number without the decimal is going to be the numerator. And then you just reduce the fraction to lowest terms. Once again, you can use the calculator to check. 
you're just gonna take that fraction you got as an answer and take, so here you would take three divided by four to make sure you get the decimal that you started with. So this question here gives you a starting fraction of 12 over 32 and wants you to find which of these choices is it equivalent to. So I'm gonna use these choices to help guide me. So I noticed that in A, the top fraction of that, in that numerator is 96. So I'm gonna think what times 12 will get me to 96? So 12 times what? So 12 times E will get me to 96. And if you need to do some guess and check on your calculator to get to that, you can. So if I take 32 times 8 on the calculator, that's going to give me 256, which the denominators here don't match, so it's not going to be A. So then I'm going to take that starting fraction again, 12 over 32, and look at B. So B, my numerator is 144, and I'm going to think 12 times what will get me to 144? And if you need to, you can do some guess and check on your calculator, but it's 12 times 12 equals 44. And then, so I'm going to take 32 times 12, because when you're finding an equivalent fraction, you always have to multiply the top and the bottom by the same number because then essentially you're multiplying by one because you're multiplying by the fraction 12 over 12. So it doesn't change anything. So then 32 times 12, and just do that straight on your calculator, is going to get you 384. And this time the denominators match. So that means B is probably going to be your answer. Now you could go ahead and check the rest of these just to make sure you didn't make a silly mistake. So for C, you have 12 over 32, and the numerator in C is 60. So 12 times what will give you 60? 12 times 5 will give you 60. And so then I take the bottom times 5 also. 32 times 5 is 160, and so those denominators don't match, so it's not C. And then I just do it one more time for D, starting with that fraction I was given in the problem. And then my numerator in D is 72. So 12 times what will give me 72? And 12 times 6 will give me 72. So I take the new denominator times 6 also. 32 times 6 is 100 and 96 and so once again those denominators don't match so it can't be G so I'm very confident that my final and correct answer is B. And this question is very similar to the last one only this time we're given a fraction and this fraction the numbers of the numerator and the denominator are bigger than the ones I'm given in my answer. So that means that I'm going to have to divide by some whole number hopefully top and the bottom to get to one of these. So I'm going to go through that same process. I'm going to take that first fraction that I'm given in the problem and see this time I'm going to see what can I divide to get to the numerator of 60. And if you're not sure on that, you can take 180 divided by 60 on your calculator, and that's going to give you 3. So 180 divided by 3 is 160. So then I had to take 216 divided by 3, and that gives me 72, which means this, this denominator matches with this denominator, which is going to make A my final answer. Now let me show you how one, an incorrect answer would work also. So for B, you would want to start with that fraction that you're given, and then you're going to look at the numerator of choice B, which is 80. 
And then you want to look, okay, 180 divided by what will get you to 80? And if you're not sure, you can reverse that on your calculator. Do 180 divided by 80. And if you do that, you're going to get 2.25, so 2 and a quarter. And so that's a decimal. So it's kind of a red flag that this one probably isn't going to work out. But you can go ahead and try it on the denominator also. 216 divided by 2.25 is going to be 96. But that denominator and this denominator don't match, so that's not going to be B. If you ever did this division here in the bottom and got a decimal as an answer, that's a you can't have a decimal as part of your fraction. You don't see any decimals in your answers, so that would be an automatic that's not my answer. Now we're going to look at a couple of problems where we are converting a fraction to a decimal. So here we have a whole number out front in the fraction. So that's going to be what's in front of the decimal here. So I can just go ahead and put that 15. And then I need to look at 3 fifths and convert that to a decimal also. So this is where I'm going to have to use division. I'm going to draw my division symbol. The 3 is going to go underneath, and the 5 is going to go out front. Now, 5 can't divide into 3. So it goes in 0 times. So that means I'm going to have to add a decimal and add a 0, and this time I'm going to go ahead and also put the decimal straight up above in my answer so that I don't lose track of it. And then I'm going to look, okay, 5 divides into 30 how many times? It divides in 6 times. So I'm going to take 5 times 6, which is 30, subtract, and that's 0. So I'm done. So 3 fifths converts to 0 0.6. So that means I'm going to have 0.6 after my decimal and my answer. So that means 15.6 is going to be my final answer. I pulled up this simple calculator because I want to show you how you can also use it to check yourself. And so just remember though on your state test you cannot use a calculator that has this negative and plus symbol. Um, so if yours has that don't get in the habit of using it. But you're just going to take 3 divided by 5 equals, and there it tells you it's also 0.6. And so that's how you can use the calculator to check yourself. So here's another question where they give us a fraction and want us to find the decimal expansion, which just means you, the decimal form. So that means I'm going to have to use division. So I'm going to take my denominator and place that outside of the division symbol. And then underneath, I'm going to put my numerator. And I'm going to go ahead and divide that. So 25 can't divide into 1. And so you can put a 0 on top of that as a placeholder. but you want to go ahead and add in the decimals and add in a zero and look to see, okay, can 25 divide into 10? No. So I'm going to put a zero above there, add another zero, and think, okay, can 25 divide into 100? Yes. There's four quarters in a dollar, so 25 times four will get you to 100. So then you take 4 times 25, which is 100, subtract, and 100 minus 100 is 0, so that means that we're done. And remember, it's important that you put that 4 right above that last 0 so that you see that this decimal be is 4 hundredths and not 4 tenths, so that you have that 4 in the right place value, and that's going to give us the correct answer of C. And once again, I just want to show you how you can check this problem in your calculator. 
So you're going to take the numerator, so 1, divide it by the denominator, which is 25, press enter, and there is your answer, 4 hundredths, and confirming that C is our final answer. We have one more fraction to convert to a decimal, and this one's going to be a little bit different than the last one, so pay close attention. It's going to start off the same. Anytime you're converting a fraction to a decimal, you're going to put the numerator under the division symbol and the denominator up front. And here I'm going to think, okay, 3 divided by what will get me 1, or 3 times what gets me 1. And you can't do that. 3 doesn't divide into 1. So I'm just going to put a 0 up there as a placeholder. I'm going to add a decimal and add a 0 and add my decimal up front. And I'm going to think, okay, 3 divides into 10 how many times? 3 times. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 3 up on top. 3 times 3 is 9. Do that subtraction. 10 minus 9 is 1. So I still have to, I have to keep going, so I'm going to add another 0. Go ahead and bring that zero down. And I have, okay, three divides into 10. How many times? So well, I just said that's three. So I put a three up here and I do three times three is nine. Do that subtraction, 10 minus nine is one. So I still have a remainder, so I have to keep going. So I add a zero, bring that zero down. And I have another 10. And so it's looking like this process, I just keep getting the same thing over and over again. 3 divides into 10 how many times? 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. I do that subtraction and I get a 1 again. So when you keep getting the same pattern over and over again, 10 minus 9, 10 minus 9, 10 minus 9, 3 times 3, 3 divides in 3 times, that's a sign that this is going to be a repeating decimal. So it's not going to end. It's just going to continue to be 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, on and on and on. So that means that this is, this decimal is 0.3 repeating. And the way that we show repeating is a solid line on top of the number or numbers that repeat. So you can write that down in your notes. The way that we show repeating is a solid line on top of the number or numbers that repeat. If you need to pause and rewind to get that, please do so. And so that's gonna make D our final answer. So once again, I want to show you how you can use the calculator to check yourself. So once again, you're going to take the numerator divided by the denominator. So here, 1 divided by 3 equals. And here, you see that it has 0.333. And so it looks like it ends on the calculator. But that's just because this calculator only has so much room. Your calculator will probably have more 3s after it. If you have threes filling the entire screen, that's a cue that the, it's repeating. It's just the calculator can't show you, doesn't have a repeating symbol. So that's when you would need to realize and be smarter than the calculator that you really need to have your answers 0.3 with the repeating symbol over 3. Our last two problems are going to show you how to convert a decimal to a fraction. So once again, if you have that whole number in front of the decimal, that's going to be a, the whole number in front of the fraction in your answer also. So I can just write a 5. Now the point 15, I have to convert to a fraction. So the le this 5 is in the hundredths decimal place. So that means my denominator is going to be 100. And I'm going to put a 15 on top of that. And then I just have to divide, I just have to reduce 15 over 100. So I'm going to take 15 over 100, and I see that those end in a 5 and a 0, so that means I can divide 5 out of both of those. So I'm going to divide 15 by 5, and I'm going to divide 100 by 5. And so 15 divided by 5 is 3. And 100 divided by 5 is 20, and I still have that big whole number 5 out front. And there, I see that my answer matches. Now, if you wanted to check this in the calculator, you would take 3 divided by 20 and press Enter, and that would give you this point fifteen. And so that is how you can check. And then our last problem here, it doesn't have a whole number out front. It does have a negative, though. 
So I just have to remember to carry the negative down in my answer. In here, I'm gonna look at what place value this two is in, because it's the last number after the decimal, and it's in the tenths place, so that means I'm gonna put a two over 10, and then I just have to reduce it. I see that both these numbers are even, so I'm gonna divide them both by two. Two divided by two is one, and 10 divided by two is five. Carry that negative down, don't forget about it. And I see that my final answer here is negative one-fifth. Once again, to check that answer, you would just take one divided by five equals in the calculator, and that'll also give you point two. And here, you just need to realize that this started with a negative, so you need to end with a negative also. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.